Thank you so much for being here. I am positively psyched to be here with all of you. And I hope um, in the end, you will have all the tools that you need to get a little bit more positively psyched about life. So fresh, as Katie mentioned, Dr. Robert Graham, who's sitting right here, my husband, um, these are our modalities. And happiness is such a big part of our recipe for success and happiness that obviously it's part of the program. You get it? The program? And I just want to point out that happiness, uh, p the pursuit of happiness, is um, the most popular course taught at Harvard. And this amazing professor, Tal Ben-Shahar, actually visited us in Brooklyn and um, came to one of our talks on positive psychology. <clears throat> And here we go. Looks like all of you guys at Wanderlust, when I was looking out the window, everyone's jumping around and doing all these fun things. Um, and what we forget is that the purpose of our lives really is to be happy. And with our hectic schedules and um, all of our responsibilities and the pressure we put on ourselves, sometimes we forget that that's what we're meant to do. And remember, it's simple, right? Are you happy? Yes or no? If you are, keep going. If you're not, it's time to change something. And so that could be a little uncomfortable, but hopefully I'll give you some tools on how to do that. Um, 2017, the 20th happiest countries in the world. Congratulations, Canada. You're way ahead of us in the US. Good job, we can learn a lot from you. Woo, yeah. Um, so you're number seven, so that's pretty impressive. The U United States is down to 14. So I guess we made the top 20. Uh, but we have some room to grow here. And our, our fresh assistant just moved to Denmark uh, in Copenhagen for a year, and she's already like feeling um, the happiness factor there. <laughs> okay, so money does not buy us happiness, according to the research. So many of us think our next job, our next raise, you know, how can we make more money? Um, that does not bring us happiness. What does is being optimistic, friendships, and sleep and exercise. So some of the fresh modalities are right in here. Especially, um, also physical, oh, attractiveness. I thought that said physical activity, okay. All right, so, um, so how do we move to becoming more positively psyched or happy with our lives? We all wanna be happy, but where do we start? So, good news. We're, the evolution of the brain, we're actually kind of wired to be negative. Um, the, uh, the limbic, the lizard brain, which was first to develop, is in the back of the brain. And when we experience something, the first thing we do is we sense. Is there danger around? Then we emote and then we think. The frontal lobe is the CEO. And oftentimes we don't make, we don't have time to really think and we overreact and we're stressed. But the brain fixates to default to the negative. So it's not just you. Because back when we had to uh, make sure that we weren't gonna die from a saber-toothed tiger chasing us in the wild, missing the bad was life-threatening. We had to be alert, we had to be aware, we had to be on guard. Missing the good was not. Okay, so, but we have the same old programming in a new world. And if the, hard the hardware isn't changing, we have to update the software. And I bring this um, raising of the flags in, in Iwo Jima um, in World War II. I bring this up for a reason, because the history of psychology. Before World War II, psychology had actually three distinct missions. It was curing mental illness, making the lives of people more productive and fulfilling, and identifying and nurturing high talent. Now, how many of you still, when you think of psychology, you think of all three modalities? Shortly after World War II, the primary focus shifted to the first one of curing mental illness because so many of the vets were coming back with a lot of PTSD and a lot of other disorders that actually um, they, there was funding from the government for people to pursue psychology so that they could counsel these soldiers. And then it kind of went off in that trajectory. During the 1950s, though, Abraham Maslow helped renew the interest in positive psychology on happiness and positive aspects of human nature. And in 1998, 
Seligman was elected the president of the American Psychological Association and positive psychology became the theme of his term. And this is um, Seligman right here. Positive psychology, so what is it? This is how he defines it. It's the scientific study of the strengths that enable individuals and communities to thrive. So it's scientists, it, it's scientific, it's not happyology. It's not like no matter what we go through in life, we're just gonna be happy about it because we know that we go through real challenges. It's learning how to struggle well and giving yourself permission to be human. The field founded on the belief people wanna lead meaningful and fulfilling lives to cultivate what's best for themselves and enhance their experiences of love, work, and play. How do you know your strengths? Well, guess what? There's a simple test that you can take online that's called the VIA Character Strengths Test. VIAcharacter.org. And it lists 24 strengths. And when you're done with the test, it will list your strengths in order. So focusing on strengths. My top strength is creativity. My husband's top strength is judgment. We could. We couldn't be more opposite in the way we do things. And a lot of the times when I'm thinking of creative ideas, I'm married to a scientist who's like, you have to write it down. You have to build a roadmap. And I'm like, that's not how my mind works. So if you're in personal relationships, I suggest taking this test and figuring out where your strengths lie. And you may want the doctor that has judgment as their top strength instead of creativity. <clears throat> OK, I love this quote by Albert Einstein. If you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. Meaning that focusing on our strengths, when we compare ourselves to others, somebody that you admire may be succeeding in by using their own strengths. And the key is not to do what they're doing, but to figure out what your strengths are and to change the things you want to change focusing on that. And guess what? There's also a happiness formula. A lot of people say, I'm not happy. Well, how come? Well, nobody in my family's happy. Guess what? Biological set point is 50%. 10% is life conditions, but 40% is our choice, our voluntary activities, where we choose to spend our time and our energy. So keep that in mind, and we can always move our set point. And Chris, Dr. Chris Peterson, the late great, one of the founding fathers of positive psychology, defined it in three words. Other people matter. So we need each other. That's why we come together at these Wanderlust festivals and we all kind of feed off of each other. <clears throat> and these were just uh, two really interesting things to uh, remember. I, I learned this in the positive psychology course. The brain doesn't know the difference between what it sees and what it thinks about. So you can be here in this room, but if your mind's wandering off to a stressful event, your body doesn't know the difference that you're not in that event. So be, be aware of where your mind goes, and if your mind's going into an area that is a dark corner that you know isn't serving you, then if you create your own reality and the reality you're experiencing does not serve you, create a new one. And this is how I created a new mindset for myself. I created positively psych the ABCs of positive psychology. When I took my class using my top strength of creativity, I realized we, I was learning all of these interesting words. All of these words that I'm gonna present to you have scientific research behind them that I learned in the class. And I started learning about things like awe and broaden and build and compassion. So this is just a little snippet of what my Instagram page at Positively Psyched looks like. And I opened it up for the public um, for th the purpose of this talk. And this was a flow experience in the making. I actually just got my iPhone 6. I started c writing down and my A through Zs. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna pair a picture that represents each letter. This is my lens, and what I would encourage you to do is create your own ABCs of positive psychology because, again, we all have strengths and we all see life through a different lens. So let's start with awe. So again, these are all my own pictures. This was one I, when I lived along the Hudson River uh, when I first moved into one of my apartments and I saw the sun rising um, over the Manhattan skyline. So awe. <clears throat> Who, how many of you saw the solar eclipse the other day? 
many of us took the time out of our busy schedules to go outside, to look up, and be in awe of this amazing, phenomenal, cosmic experience, right? But we can experience awe. We don't need a solar eclipse to experience awe. We can take the scenic route. We can go outside, turn your gaze upwards, get your head out of your phone. <laughs> My one friend says, get your head out of your asana, but we won't, that, that's a different <laughs> one. Um, so um, again, so awe, ah, you know, there's so many things in this world to be, that, that would create awe for you. Stopping to smell the roses. When was the last time you took the time to exper experience awe? So, with each picture, I have a hashtag, PP, which is positively psyched, and then awe. So if you, what I would love for you to do is like my positively psyched, and I would like you to capture awe, tag the positively psyched, and then create the hashtag PP awe, where we can build a community, where we can all see the way, we, the, where we can all share how we created awe on our own. Broaden and build. Broaden and Build is actually the twin towers of positive psychology based on research by Barbara Fredrickson. And it's basically when we're feeling more positive we, and we broaden our horizons, we build on those reserves like wanderlust. This is such an amazing experience. If a week from now you're like, God, my life is kind of boring, you're going to say, I was just at wanderlust. What am I talking about? So when we experience amazing things like wanderlust, it builds, creates a reservoir of positive emotions. I took this picture when the Freedom Tower was being built coming out of a yoga class along the Hudson. So again, I ask you, how can you begin to broaden and build your reservoir of positive emotions? PP, broaden and build. Compassion. Compassion is defined as to suffer together. It is the ability to understand the emotional state of another person, and it's a sister of mindfulness. It creates a desire to help and alleviate another person's suffering. So ask yourself, do you create, do you show enough compassion? How would you capture compassion? And are you actively driven to help? And who in your life deserves a little bit more of your compassion? And as you can see the hashtag, it's just PP and the word. D is discernment. <clears throat> so discernment is the ability to judge well using one's insight. You know, if we take a right and we, go in this direction, we didn't take a left. And sometimes we don't make the right decision. Remember, permission to be human, we're always learning. Um, but the next time you're at a crossroads, really try to use your intuition and discern what would be the best route for you to take. And do you feel confident in your decisions when you're discerning? When was the last time you made a great decision using discernment? And again, this is all available to you on my Instagram page. Empathy. This was um, right after 9-11. There was so much empathy that poured into New York City, and this was an example of the Tiles for America, which unfortunately has been moved um, from this original space. But it's the ability to see and feel the world through another person's perspective. We're so in our own heads and in our own thoughts that sometimes what makes us feel better and happier in life is really helping others. So we must truly listen in order to feel empathetic. How can you be more empathetic towards somebody who's going through a rough patch? Again, all of these letters increase your happiness. <clears throat> Flow. This was me assisting a yoga class in Bryant Park. Has anybody here been to New York City? Who loves New York City here? Woo! I know. <clears throat> okay, so flow. What's really cool about flow is flow is the, the sweet spot between skill and challenge. So if you're not skilled at something, you're not going to find that flow experience. If you're not challenged at something, you're also not going to feel it. So it's that thing that you're working right at your edge that you're slightly um, challenged, that you really have to pay attention, where suddenly you feel you're one with the music. So ask yourself, when was the last time you felt you were in the flow? What were you doing? And what other positive emotions accompanied that experience? And here we go. Gratitude. Here I am, uh, uh, blowing up, getting ready to blow out my candles on Martha's Vineyard on one of my birthdays. Gratitude, a sense of thankfulness and joy in response to receiving a gift, whether it's tangible 
or, or a moment of peaceful bliss evoked by natural beauty. So people who are more grateful have more life satisfaction, sleep better, and have greater vitality, and are more optimistic. So re this is, research has proven that if you keep a gratitude journal and you write down three things you're grateful for for three weeks, it will increase your overall happiness for up to six months. So remember, three plus three equals six. Write down three things you're grateful for for three weeks, and it will increase, it will broaden and build and build that reserve for up to six months. Moving right along to hope. I took this in my friend's car uh, driving around sunny San Diego, and I was like, you don't see this in New York. It's one thing you don't see in New York. Um, so hope is the motivating force for change. So if you want to change something and you're hopeless about it, you're not going to be able to. So in order to change, we need to hold the belief, the hope that change is possible. And I believe change is always possible. And I love hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tunes without the words and never stops at all. So goals are the anchors of hope. What do you hope to accomplish and how can you use hope to achieve that goal? Intention. This was meditation that I helped. Um, um, I was assisting in Bryant Park once again. So the intention, setting our intentions. Before yoga class, I'm a yoga teacher since 2005 too, I always have my students set an intention that, you know, dedicating their practice to their own source of inspiration or what do they intend. So set an intention to do your best, which can positively affect your attitude and attention. So when was the last time you set an intention for yourself? What intention can you set for the near future? Joy. This was at the stroke of midnight during a Coldplay and Jay-Z concert in uh, Brooklyn, New York at Barclays on New Year's Eve. Did I say that? Positive psychology researcher uh, Sonia, I will, I'm not going to even attempt to say that uh, last name, describes happiness as the expression of joy, contentment, positive well-being combined with the sense that one's life is good, meaningful, and worthwhile. And I assume if you're all here today, life is pretty good, right? <clears throat> what brings you that feeling of joy? For me, it's concerts. Katie and I were just talking about music and how, you know, that's like a passion of mine. I will go to the ends of the earth to, to seek out my favorite musicians. But that's my lens. What can you do to create more joy in your life? Keystone Habit, this was summer solstice yoga in Times Square a few years ago. Did you know that we do a summer solstice in Times Square every year in New York City on June 21st? Keep that in mind if you ever want to visit. So a Keystone Habit, what is that? So actually it is um, correlated with other good habits. So when I do yoga, I also, those are the days I tend to feel more balanced emotionally. And when I feel more balanced emotionally, I eat better, I sleep better, I feel better. <clears throat> So can you think of your keystone habit? What is the habit that you do? A lot of people, you know, are runners and they, you know, if they run, they, you know, it sets their day up for other success. Remember, you're broadening and building. Luck. Yankee Stadium, as you can see, it's home run. And right above the home run, I spotted a rainbow. So how many of you in here think you're lucky? Woo! Okay. How many of you don't? Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, guess what? No more excuses because lucky people actually increase their own luck. My mom used to say, oh, I'm going to the casino tonight and I know I'm not going to win. I said, nope, then I guess you're not going to win. <laughs> and she didn't, but I told her nobody really wins at the casino. But um, did you ever notice you have some people that are like, oh, I'm just not lucky in life. Nothing really good happens to me. Um, even me being here, I feel so lucky to be here, but it was many connections that got me to meet Katie and we befriended and here I am. And yes, it was luck, but it was also action. And what I want to point out so far and as we continue on is all of these are verbs. It's all about taking action. We want to be happy, but we have to take steps in that direction. So remember, four basics of lucky people. They're skilled at creating and noticing chance opportunities. So when you see that person that you've been dying to talk to, and you go, oh, that person just walked by. Get up, run over to that person, say what you need to say. That's just one example. Make lucky decisions by listening to your intuition and discerning. Create self-fulfilling prophecies 
with positive expectations and adopts a resilient attitude that transforms bad luck into good. So are you lucky? No more excuses. You can be luckier. So what can you do to increase your luck factor? Mindfulness. This was my first class of teaching doctors uh, meditation at Lenox Hill Hospital. Um, I, I experienced Rob's residency. Rob and I have been together for 21 years. I met him before he even started med school, so I went through the whole crazy cycle. Now he's becoming a chef, so, uh, which is <laughs> so interesting. Um, but um, and I was like, God, all that med school and residency. And, uh. um, but again, the happiness factor is more important, right? And that's why he's here. If he was a practicing doctor like he was and you know, working crazy hours, he wouldn't be here savoring and enjoying. Okay, so I knew uh, residents needed some relaxation and meditation, so I'm so proud that I helped introduce the Lennox Chill Factor at Lennox Hill Hospital in New York City, which is still up and running. So mindfulness is learning how to pay attention to what's occurring within our field of experience from moment to moment. It's finding the union between outer activity and inner experience. How many of you feel like you're mindful most of the day? Not me. Really, one person. <laughs> you should be up here then. <laughs> um, most of us, where our minds are and, and where we are physically, s never seem to be at the same place at the same time. So by you know, being more aware and slowing down, I remember finding that flow. So a lot of these words kind of intersect with each other. When was the last time you felt like you were really experiencing mindfulness? For me, I feel mindful when I'm doing yoga. When I have to focus on my postures and focus on my breath, even though the mind wanders, it's not about absence of thought. It's about when the mind wanders, you come right back to what you're concentrating on. North of neutral, this is so important. So I saw the Space Shuttle Challenger fly right over my head along the Hudson River. And north of neutral is another great term coined by Dr. Peterson. Um, that is basically just because you're not depressed doesn't mean you're happy. So a lot of people that I talk to as a health coach, I, I say like, are you happy? And they're like, no, but I'm not depressed. I'm, I'm okay, I'm blah, like I'm fine. How many of you hear people like, I'm fine. I'm not, you know. But is that what our purpose is in life, is to be neutral? So the whole field of positive psychology is taking you north of neutral. And through the practice of these ABCs, Again, remember all of these words have research behind them that if you practice these, it will shift you north of neutral. And are you stuck in neutral? A lot of us are. What would it feel like to be north of neutral? And furthermore, what can you do to bring yourself north of neutral? Optimism, I took this out my window, uh, again, living along the Hudson River. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people who are more optimistic flourish and live longer. And it's a skill that can be learned. Martin Seligman, we're going back to him, learned optimism is the idea that a talent for joy can be cultivated. We can actively change our negative self-talk to be more optimistic. So are you an optimist? And how can you plan to cultivate more optimism in your life? Food for thought, right? Positive psychology, this was Mark Groves, Katie. Mark Groves, right here. <laughs> so uh, we share a friend. We share a couple of friends in common. But um, positive psychology is my P. And basically, it was coined, as you know, in 1954. Strives to, to study not just what's wrong with us, but what's right with us. And Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all believed that happiness meant living and doing well, a life filled with value, including frequent positive feelings and emotions. So what is your new and improved formula for happiness? Quality connections. I just, I took this picture a couple years ago, but Rob and I were riding our bikes around Central Park like three weeks ago, and they have tango in Central Park. So you hear the music and all these couples, you know. Um, we already learned that um, other people matter, and our connections to others, not money, not our next job, not losing 10 pounds, other people and our connections to them is what really is important. So other people matter. Here we go. Creating and cultivating quality connections with others increases our happiness. That's why we're all here, right? Because when we come together, it makes us happier. We're vibing off of each other. We're wanderlusting together. And again, a community gives us the feeling of comfort and belonging. 
So how can you cultivate more quality connections with others? And again, I'm keeping these questions simple because, you know, um, you got to keep it simple, right? Otherwise, it feels maybe too daunting to make some of the changes that we need. So the Tower of Lights, this was taken um, on 9-11 a few years ago. <sighs> the ability to spring back into shape or better yet, take on a new and improved shape altogether. Positive attitude, optimism, the ability to regulate emotions and see setbacks as opportunities. So we have to be resilient in life, right? Because we're going to have our setbacks. We're going to go through things that no matter how great of a person we are, we're going to go through losing people we love or challenges. And, you know, resilient people are happier. So would you consider yourself a resilient person? Yeah, I saw some nods. Good. How can you increase your resiliency the next time you're challenged? How many of you listen to Beyonce's Lemonade obsessively like I did. <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> so it was all, it's all about making lemonade that no matter what you're going through, at the end of the day, we really have to spring back. And hopefully sometimes it's our challenges that make us um, e even better, savoring us. When is the last time you really savored something? People who are mindful of their experience have more positive emotions. When was the last time you took the time to savor? Set a goal to savor something. Savor something here today. Transcendence. So it's defined as climbing or going beyond a previous state. Self-transcendence. Focusing on someone other than themselves. Where can you go beyond and transcend yourself? Understanding Rob at the Natural Gourmet Institute where he's going to become a chef starting in September. So the old saying, there's no greater distance between two people than misunderstanding. And a lot of the times we're just not listening. Again, we're stuck in our head. So is there a relationship suffering from misunderstanding? What can you do to improve that connection? Vitality. Defining a state of being strong and active with energy. Feeling vitality in your life. The, the, the play between, uh, or the, the balance between play and rest. When was the last time you felt vitality? Probably this morning, right, here at Wanderlust. It's easy to feel it here, but remember, no matter where we are, we need to create more vitality. Sheep's Meadow in Central Park, willpower, doing some yoga there, requires grit, interest, and persistent effort, a passionate pursuit of a long-term goal. Remember, to evolve, we have to make these slow, steady changes and keep coming back. For me, it was coming back to my mat. What gives you the power of will? Visualize your best self and how you can use willpower to move into that direction. Jay-Z and Beyonce, the X Factor, a special quality or talent that makes a person stand out from the rest or something that makes you change your behavior. Think of a person you know that has that X Factor. What talents make them stand out? Why is yoga? Here's me at a Yoga Work Studio where I teach in New York City. Yoga is defined as union, to yoke together. So. Again, yoga is my keystone habit, is vital, but you can find yoga not only on your map, but how do you find union in your emotions, your appetites? So if, even if you've never tried yoga, how can you find more yoga or union in your life? And finally, zest for Z. Zest is one of the top one of the strengths in the VIA character strengths test, and you can read that. So according to a study, zest was related to an increased level of life satisfaction. So are you zesty? Take the VIA character strengths test to find out. Remember, there's no wrong answers. Your strengths are your strengths. So that is my positively psyched project, A through Z, all through zest. And um, you can find me on Instagram. And also, I just launched an, an iBooks, something uh, on iBooks. So you can look for me there. And I just want to point out that you can follow me on positive. Remember to please join us where we discuss, discuss Fresh Med in more detail on Sunday at 10 a.m. Cool. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, your attention.